there is a new industrial policy uh, that's uh, in the works at this point in time. How soon can we expect an announcement on that front? And two, what more can we expect in terms of FDI? I mean, there has been a significant liberalization already of the FDI regime. There are a few uh, items that have been on the uh, table that uh, haven't yet uh, reached a conclusion. For instance, allowing non-food retail as part of the food retail policy. Uh, how soon can we expect further movement on the FDI-related matters and also the new industrial policy? See, you are absolutely right. On the industrial policy, the broad idea is to remove all the regulations. So I already set up a committee under the chairmanship of Secretary DIPP to review all the regulation so that we reduce as much regulation as possible. Number two, our idea is to take ease of doing business to the next level, maybe the top 50 yes. over a period of time. It yes. will not happen in a hurry. But we'll, that's the target. We'll take it on that. Thirdly, in the industrial policy, we must identify six or seven or five or six new emerging industries. Mm. So you talk about an iceberg, we see one third, you don't yeah. see the two thirds. Yeah. So at least one third you can see. But it is not even iceberg policy, but something which you don't see today, but which is going to emerge tomorrow. Mm. So how do you identify those sectors today and take them forward while protecting our existing industries? Mm. So we should not abandon the industry, sure. uh, total industry and try to go run for a new industry. So this is the, going to be the thrust of industrial policy, is to encourage investments into sectors which we will identify. And we are already working with top global experts mm. to identify such sectors mm. which will find a place into this policy. Also, the present policy which needs modernization, right. uh, for, for present industry which needs modernization. If we don't do that, they will their natural death over a period of time, mm. like the textile industry in Mumbai, in mm. Ahmedabad. Mm. It was called the Manchester of the East, yeah. but yeah. they didn't modernize. Mm. So I think we should try to protect that. So then, of course, we are going to have a wider consultation. I am sure all of you can offer advice so that we will take it forward. Mm. On the FDI, there are two elements to FDI. One is the policy. We boost sectoral caps, allowing FDI into various sectors. That's one part of the policy which has been done. The sector is getting actual FDI into projects. Yes. So that is more important. So you enabler was changing the policy. Hmm. The reality would be when the investments come to the sectors. And so therefore now we are doing country by country analysis. Just now we had a very interesting discussion with the Canadian minister and he is fully committed to bring hmm. more investments into India. Hmm. We had a similar road show in Stockholm where in first time India, Make in India was yes. event was organized yes. outside the country. There again we had an overwhelming response. We are working with various companies. We are identifying certain hmm. countries from where the FDI can come. So what is the I target, sir, then, as far as the FDI? I mean, we've had a good track record for the past year uh, at a record high. What is it that you're targeting now, See, sir? Target means I would rather feel as much as possible. That's the target. And therefore, what we are doing is also the companies. See, one is a country. But countries don't invest unless yes. it's a sure. so socialist country, yeah, yeah. which is centrally command economy. So companies invest. So we are actually now talking to company CEOs. Mm. In fact, not all, but most of the Fortune 500 companies, we want to establish one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Mm. So we increase the comfort level. Then they have to make investment to India. Mm -hmm. we, we should provide them that support. Because basically, investment is also a real decision in terms of putting money. Mm. But what precedes that, actually putting money, is a psychology. Mm. I must tell you something very interesting is a lot of we are identifying certain products, which I told you about the new yes. industry as well as so the old industry, where we think significant investment can help India to increase a share into manufacturing. Mm. For example, ease of doing business is one very good accepted yes. idea globally. World Bank does that ranking. We are also working on ease of trading. Mm. Why not we make one common platform for export activities mm. in which many ministries have to come on board yes including custom department, mm. but we have to work with that. But our idea is that we are trying to develop that DGFT. I have directed them to work on that so that over a period of time... So you replace DGFT with a new body? In a sense, they are the ones who are currently doing it. So the ministry will do it, yeah. but we'll, because DGFT has the data, DGFT has sure. the wherewithal of doing it. So they will take top consultant and because they have the information. See, basically, whenever you want to automate something like this, wherever you want to put on a digital platform like this, you need physical information available, so that's sure. available with them. 
so then let me ask you, uh, you know, because you said that you feel confident about uh, where the economy is today. Uh, new projects in the second quarter down 64%. The fall was largely due to an 83% fall in private new project announcements. CapEx levels have fallen to almost one third of FI11 CapEx. Uh, the gross capital formation, though, we have seen an uptick. Uh, we grew at about 1.6% in the second quarter, but for five straight quarters we had seen a fall. Do you believe that we are now on the cusp of seeing momentum picking up from here on? Yeah, absolutely. There is undoubtedly. In fact, there are many things happening which do not capture the, the uh, attention as much as it should be. For example, the deleveraging of Indian business has started in a big way. Mm. See, the companies, if they don't deleverage, then there is no ability for them to borrow more or to invest more. Mm. See, the one of the challenges is that private sector investment in India has not increased significantly for various reasons. But one of the reasons is the high leveraging of those sure. companies. If the deleveraging has start, started already, that means banks are getting better mm. off because deleveraging means they will mm. be repaying the loans and therefore they will be doing. Also, that means the ability of the companies to borrow increases because every company can borrow only limited amount. Sure. There's a borrowing power decided by their articles of association, but mm. also by the prudential norms of the banking system. Mm. So if the deleveraging is happening, that means more and more investment will come into the private sector in the next few years. Then. Secondly, the industrial production, which is also showing sign of revival. The core sector growth is showing signs of revival. The consumption is also increasing. The tax revenues, both direct tax, personal tax, as mm. well as corporate tax, are showing increase. When you, when only you will have um, revenue increasing, only when you earn more, that's why sure. you are putting more. If the corporates are earning more, mm. obviously their ability to invest also will increase. Mm. So I think all these are very good signs, the consumption, investment, and also the public investment mm. also has gone up significantly. As you know yourself, yes. the railways, for example, uh, almost first three years yes. of this current government, Prime Minister Modi's government, is 3,75,000 crores is a committed investment, right. as opposed to 4 lakh crores, mm. which the previous 70 years of government had put in. Sure. So public investment is rising, private sector investment is showing signs of mm. revival, deleveraging is happening, consumption is increasing, savings rate in economy is increasing. So that's a very, very good sign. Because unless you have savings, mm. how will you make the investment? On the other side, international interest in India is growing, so FDI is increasing. Mm. So I would consider inflation, which is still manageable. Sure. So I think these are all very good, strong fundamentals of economy, mm. which will turn, will propel India into a different growth trajectory. I think the new normal will emerge when India will grow at an even faster rate. Yes, sir, since you talked about savings, let me very quickly ask you about uh, whether you're also uh, working on uh, reforms related to gold. I believe that this is a matter that the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council is also looking at. Has there been any conversation within the Commerce Ministry on, on gold, sir, on gold-related reforms? See, you know, gold. Yeah. See, you know, whether we like it or not, India's appetite for gold is insatiable. You know, with how, many, how much gold you buy, they'll be there. So one is gold bonds were issued yeah. so that, you know, people don't have to invest. But there is certain amount of gold that will be used in India is for actual, I'll not sorry, consumption, but mm. in a sense, because gold cannot mm. be literally be consumed, but consumed. Like, for example, some woman would like to wear it at the time sure. of wedding. So she's not going to wear a gold bond. So she wants, yes. wants her to have that. Yeah. So I think there is certain element of gold is bound to be used. Mm. So what we have, we have to work on is convince the people, change the mindset mm. that investment in gold, if you put the same money mm. into some financial instrument, that, of course, saving is saving. Where it goes into metal, it's a saving. It goes into housing, it goes mm. into saving. It goes into capital market, it's a saving. Or if you keep mm. it in the bank, it's a saving. Mm. But if you can put into financial saving, yeah. the circulation happens in a bigger way. So that's a matter of changing the mindset to the people and try to convince them. I believe there's also a proposal to merge MMTC and STC, sir. How soon can we expect that to happen? That's something which is on the card, which mm. is, we are actually, the cabinet has to take a decision. But I think both uh, will benefit from this merger. Uh, merger and then divestment, is that a possibility no, that's as well? That's something which I cannot tell you today, but definitely that's something which the cabinet has to take a call, but that's something which has been discussed for a while now. So we've got a WTO meeting coming up. Uh, uh, are we likely to see, do you believe, uh, any forward movement on the WTO agenda, specifically when it comes to agri-subsidies? Uh, and uh, do you believe there could be additions to, to the WTO agenda this time around? You know, one is, uh, we, first of all, we just had a mini ministerial before the WTO. They did it for the first time probably because last time they had little difficulties in arriving at a consensus later on. So they did in Marrakesh, which I attended with 30, 40 other ministers from different countries. 
which the WTO secretary had chosen. We had a very good dialogue. We have put forward our concern. One is on uh, public stockholding. We said we will not agree on any condition which will uh, put any restrictive clauses mm. on India. Number two, we are very keen on market access to agriculture products in the developing countries so that they should reduce subsidies. We also said that we should not keep raising new issues in mm. WTO forum unless we resolve the other issues. We are very keen that a uh, Doha development agenda should not be just abandoned. We should be taken forward. And most importantly, which is something which is so important for not only India but all the developing countries, is that multilateralism must prevail. Mm. There is a some talk that what is the use of WTO. Yeah. So we feel strongly, no, WTO can be reformed, definitely. WTO rules can be amended for sure. But WTO as an institution, multilateral platform for discussing trade issues cannot be just be wished away with or abandoned. So therefore, we are very keen that multilateralism prevails. Knowing from uh, the ministers as well as the undertones, uh, what is happening? I don't think we should expect miracle in the in uh, Buenos Aires. At the same time, what is most important many times is to protect your own position, which we'll do very strongly. Our Prime Minister is certainly very keen to ensure that sovereignty of India is lies in the fact that we protect the interest of each and every citizen of India. Mm. So whether it is farmers, whether it is small traders, whether it is uh, agriculture as a sector or whether it is trade and services sector will definitely try to protect that and therefore we will go forward. Let me end then by asking you sir, we are almost uh, in that phase where the countdown to the union budget has started. Of course because of the GST a lot of the indirect tax action has moved to the level of the GST council. But what would your key recommendations be for the union finance minister and what would your priorities be now sir as we end this calendar year and start the I'll new year? I will be very uh, happy and therefore I am going to take up with the finance minister is that we must promote exports in India in a significant way. What you give to export is really not a subsidy, it's an investment because that promotes a strategic interest. See when you export something outside mm. India, you also develop some economic relationship in that particular country that builds up bridges with that particular country. It helps domestic economy significantly. So I will be very happy and I'll be requesting the finance minister that try to do as much as possible for the exports. Specific requests, sir, what would the specific, no, specific interventions be that you I would like? the finance minister, because if you can consider my request, <laughs> I will give tell you. But the request should be considered by the finance minister, so I'll let you talk to him. So just to give but us an understanding sector, of what the thinking no, no, is. We, we, I will uh, tell this to the finance minister. When he announced it, you will know what was the specific request. I'm sure he'll announce it in the budget. But I'm just saying is, as a strategy, India must promote exports in a very significant way. It has a great multiplier on economy. It has a great advantage and also another thing which we must very clearly appreciate. When we export something, who is manufacturing it? We are manufacturing in India. And we are exporting means the market there is accepting your product. Automatically, you are benchmarking your production capacity yeah. and quality to global standards. Right. So by exporting, you are actually helping upgrading India's yeah. capability of manufacturing. So I think I'm sure... Uh, finance Minister will do it and of course I'm sure CNBC will break the news when Finance Minister announces it. <laughs> so exports will be the number one priority. Mr. Prabhu, uh, many, many thanks for joining us here. So always a pleasure to speak with you and thanks very much for giving us a sense of what we can expect from Thank the you. Ministry of Thank Commerce. You very much.